Good evening. It is Tuesday, the 5th of March, 2024. It is coming up to 8.30 p.m. UK time. And this is the 45-day show, 021, the 21st episode. And uh, my very special guest tonight has been on quite a few of these episodes. So it's almost like uh, a reunion when we come on here again, because he's been on a few times and we've talked about his events before. And we're going to talk about his amazing event coming up in the next few days. But Without further ado, I'm going to get him on. It is ADP. Yes, Christos. How are we doing? It's good to see you. It's good to be back. Thank you for inviting me for probably our fifth time being here. Yeah, maybe the maybe the fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth. Yeah, something like that. So, um, no, but of course, you put on really cool events, uh, as I think I do. Um, and it's good that we connect and we can sort of take part in each other. But mental health is the sort of thing I think that's sort of brought us together. Mm. Um, would you say so? Is that is that why we've sort of got this bond and this friendship and putting mm. events together? Absolutely. I think you share the same vision of a, a cl- inclusive community, Christos. I think the way that you are in your own streams, the way that you are so passionate about bringing people together from across the world. And and I think we share that same vision. We're trying to sort of include as many people. Um, the community that you foster is a very inclusive one. It's very one that's positive. And I think what we want to try and do is break down some of the boundaries that exist within Twitch and within the DJ culture itself. So I think we just have a, an affinity for each other because we share the same vision. And they always say align your tribes very, very well. And I think we share that same sort of perspective on how we want to move things forward. Yeah, and it's all about the community. I mean, the music is what sort of brought us mm-hmm. together in the first place. But I think the more we're streaming and the more we've got an opportunity to talk about our beliefs and our passions, the mm-hmm. more it's helping people, isn't it? Yeah, and I think the thing is, you can only have a small drop in it. might be just a small drop in the ocean. However, I feel that the fact that we are trying our best to try and make make a difference, regardless of what the outcome is, I think that's the most important thing. You have a vision, you try to your best to try and sort of um, include everybody, because I think in this world of division, in this world where everyone's sort of fighting against each other, so to speak, and the egos and all this other nonsense that happens around the world, I think it's great to have either you know, presenters or people organizers who tend to kind of have a bit of a more of an eclectic, inclusive vision. I think that's important in this world. And whatever we want to try and do, we're trying to do it for the right reasons, you know? And it's cool. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) no, exactly. And and inclusive (laughs) is definitely something we really try and do because, Mm -hmm. you know, it just so happens that this weekend and this week and this month, in fact, is obviously International Women's Month Day week. Um, and obviously you've got part of the big mm. weekender, which is going to be mm. all women DJs. And we've got mm. coffee and donuts on Saturday, which is mm. again, all women and girl DJs as well. Yeah. So it's about allowing everyone to have some yeah. space to DJ and be part of a community, isn't it? I think it's an underrepresented demographic um, from an ethnic point of view and a gender point of view. I think the thing is that we tend to find it's a male dominated industry it's a male dominated industry, which um, we, we need to celebrate that there are so many amazing female DJs out there. And I think it's important to recognize that it's important to include, include them because I think they're part of the conversation now. And I think it's important because there's so many times where, you know, it's underrepresented. Let's put it that way. I want to be careful what I say, because again, it's such a, a how can you put it? It's a potential minefield when it comes to inclusivity. And there's a lot of things within the industry which I don't think are particularly right. And I think whatever we can do to to make people feel more involved is is the key here. Yeah, you know? and make them feel welcome. Yeah. And that they're included. And I think the other thing is obviously when you're putting sort of together raid trains and stuff that, you know, mm. you've got as much of a mix as possible mm. uh, of all types of DJ. Yeah. So I think it's so important. I, well, I, I've always tried, well, all the big weekends, anyway, if you look back historically, I've always made sure that I've had a nice mixture of, of uh, genders and ethnicities as much as I can. And I think, obviously, with it being International Women's Day, I think it's obviously a highlight to 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 highlight what, what we, um, sorry, all the good DJs that are around. And I think that's so important. I think also underrepresenting some of the people that aren't necessarily the bigger streamers, the people that don't necessarily are part of the normal ray trains. I think it's important that there's so many great DJs out there that not many people know about. And I think it's all very well to have the big 
top DJs all the time and the ones that everyone gets on the raid trains because it gets some numbers. But there's a lot of people there that are great that don't necessarily get the numbers and they just they deserve to be there just as much as anybody else. But what we're creating, and obviously when you're doing multi-day events, it, it mm. is like an online festival, isn't it? Mm. And you're yeah. you're not physically in one place hearing all these DJs and hearing whatever yeah. else is going on, but you're able to take people to different countries and it just mm. becomes this completely international mm. vibe, which you can't really achieve even at a festival because you're not going to be able to go from, right, we've got a Brazil DJ, then we've got a German mm. DJ, then yeah. we've got someone in the UK, then we've got yeah. someone in Australia. You know, it'd be impossible to put that together at a festival and we're doing it online. And that's another part of the appeal, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of Twitch as well, because, you know, so many flavors. It's like a that's what makes life amazing. The variety, the spice of life is just bringing all these different musical flavors in what people's personalities, what they come across. And we have the opportunity there within a short space of time to go across the world, bring all these flavors in and make this most amazing melting pot of cultures and diversity and um, and introduce people to new new streamers. And also international audiences can come and see some of the UK and, you know, so forth and so forth. So I think these sorts of trains are, are absolutely vital in obviously providing a much more global view on how... Uh, oh, sorry, bear with me. Lost my headphones there. Um, yeah, much more international view on things. And as you say, yeah, you're not going to get that at a festival. And yeah. this is what makes Twitch amazing because you get so, so many different flavours. Yeah, and it's just different. Yeah, what I love about it is there is so many different types of DJ. There's so mm. many different size of DJ. You know, obviously, like your scratch bars sort of at the top and Jazzy Jeff. Um, but then there's all those little streamers who are starting and people are still joining Twitch. That's the amazing mm. thing, isn't it? Mm. When we started, it was back in the pandemic. We didn't have much else to do. We were doing it that. But it's interesting that people now see it as a viable an interesting platform that they can get something from mm. and are coming into it now new. Yeah, I think the thing is, this is why I try with my raid events to bring all the different scenes together, because what you tend to find is that people stay within their scene. So if it's a drum and bass scene, they'll stay in a drum and bass scene, electronic dance music. So what I try to do is try and bring all these scenes together. And it's something which I don't know about in my circle is that you get much on Twitch where you get all the various different collectives together. Um, I think it's great now because people often treat Twitch as like a radio show where they can just put it on in the background. They don't always have to be fully engaged with the, with, with the chat and put it on in the background. And, and then you've just got so many different flavors going on. And that's what I love about decent raid trains where they do represent different styles of music because the way I try and curate my, my raid trains, it's like a mixtape methodology. I have always yeah. that kind of idea where you think about the time in the morning and you think, Oh, you know, these type of DJ is going to work there. And then what type of DJ is going to follow the next one and try and create a bit of a, a flow going on. Do you know what I mean? But and with, then, but sorry, sorry, but with all those time zones mm. as well, <laughs> it makes it mm. really difficult because, you know, if you're just saying, right, I'm just going to program this event for the UK market, what you're going to put on at midnight is not really yeah, the same as what same it's going to be. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah. that's the other thing you've got to take into account, which yeah, is why you get DJs that are just amazing all rounders and can play mm. basically all sorts of styles involved. I mean, you're never you're never going to get it perfectly right, but as you're right, yeah. For example, someone who is just waking up in the morning. It might be the middle of the night in Australia and they're not necessarily want chilled stuff. But then at the same time, it's just it's managing all those different styles of music and different artists and trying to it's knowing who you're on the raid train as well. You've got to do your research. You just don't pick people for the sake of it. You go, yeah. okay, you try to work with their style of music or the way that they mix or the styles of music they play within regards to where you position them. And it's different from I suppose how other raid trains work where this is why I'm so grateful to all the DJs that are involved because I tend to give them times and say, listen, I've earmarked you for this time. Are you available? And that's what makes me so grateful because majority of the people are like, yeah, if I'm free, I've got it. Yeah. Most rather than just putting in like a raid power thing where you put in availability because then as much as that's great and I appreciate that, it's just not the same. So I, I, I really am appreciative of people that just say, listen, I've got a window from 10.30 to 12.30. Can you play within this window? And, you know, that, to, that to then do. comes down to curation, doesn't it? Mm. Because, like you say, you are curating that as the event organizer. You're like, okay, this is 
the programming you're programming the days through mm. rather than just like you say saying well what time have you got in which case yeah. that's then people's times mm. curating it so that sort of loses a little bit of the connection to you mm. yeah and absolutely I think that's yeah. definitely that yeah um i'm gonna you say could... hello to shoestring and also double p's in the house hi guys hi guys welcome in yeah go on yeah, we got it. Actually, talking about shoestring sound, actually did a great set on Rock and Road last night. Big luck, brother. And yep. uh, we've got, I've got it covered next Wednesday, Thursday? Uh, Thursday. Next, next Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, yeah. I will send you a flyer soon. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that, actually. Um, yeah. What are you going to do on Got It Covered? What are you going to do in case people oh, don't know the other gonna... side of ADP? ADP DJ, maybe they don't know the other side. Wow. It's the thing I'm setting myself up for a full now. Whilst I'm a very confident DJ, I always find myself when I talk about music and singing and things like that, a little bit more insecure. But no, I'm doing a singing set. So I've created a multi-genre singing set where I've got backing tracks. A lot of them are the original backing tracks. Um, so anything from rock to reggae to funk, soul. I've done some singing sets before on Rock and Ray, but that's predominantly been rock. So I'm now going to try and venture out into doing some other styles of music, which... I, I, I do naturally. So it's going to be a multi-genre singing set. There we go. And I'll just keep the rest as a surprise. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's great. And mm. we're talking about curation and you, we're talking about curating your weekend. And we'll, we'll come to going through all the DJs in a minute. But um, it's curating shows as well. This is what I'm finding this year. Like Shoestring came to me with this idea saying, let's do a show about covers. I'm mm. like, okay, cool. And then we're like, right, what should it be? And we're like, okay, well, I play vinyl, you play digital. Let's open it up. Mm. And then once we did the first one, Sam and Mattis was in the chat. And then we thought of you. And we're like, why don't we open it up completely to like whatever? So Sam and Mattis did a guitar and kazoo one. Uh, kazoo. For the last one. And it was brilliant. It was Wicked. amazing. And it was an hour of Twitch that was different to mm. – anything else you know having watched twitch a lot and obviously seen a lot of djs it was nice to see something different mm. but cool at the same time and be able to collaborate i love your streams christos because you're one of those people like a lot of you know a very rare commodity on twitch where you play everything and you've got flavors and i like that on twitch i like mixing things up i think become come a bit generic at times in the same old type of music being played because everyone yeah. wants to keep everyone elevated on a nice happy like yeah, let's party vibe and sometimes people just want a different flavor so bringing in live music is a great idea well done gal on that one because i think that's brilliant because then you ultimately get you will then bring in a wider community because i know yeah. a lot of people that do um live looping and other kinds of various live music that you could bring into this idea that you have and i think that just opens up the doors for for more um but that's just yeah i mean that's just one part of it we're talking about mm. earlier about doing festivals mm. so there's no reason why we couldn't curate and work with people so you're doing yeah. a three day one i've done a four and a half day one we just need yeah. to sort of work a bit smarter not harder and mm. sort of get people to do sections so for example you can say right on this one it will be a got it covered section you give it yeah. to that organizer do with what you can because that's what festival takeovers are aren't they they basically mm. say right there you go you've got the stage for the night take it mm. over and do what you want to do we treat it in that way do you think that maybe that might be a great idea for you moving forward where you could have like multi-stage twitch events is yeah, there, there is a way yeah yeah there yeah. is a way so obviously you did it when we had the last show i think you can mm. stream to your channel as well mm. so this show you can mm -hmm. stream to your channel. And we did it with Funky Chef. I was streaming to Twitch, uh, Mixcloud, and Instagram. Um, and then he was streaming to his YouTube and his Twitch. And it was dragging people in from his community on the YouTube with our community with the Twitch and mixing it up. And it was like a really interesting thing to do. So well, we I find, do I find with streaming that. across, it's going to work. I could do that now, but the problem is you'll get my pop. What I found last time is that you'll get my pop-ups come up. So when my stream lamps in the chat, so I can make it open to my audience, but unfortunately you, you'll, it seems like you get my, um, yeah, my stream labs messages coming through in yeah. the chat. Well, we'll chat further forward but about that, but yeah, yeah, we can, we can get that sorted out. Yeah. It's not a problem. Um, but it's interesting that you can stream on two different, platforms and two different 
channels mm. because that's how we're going to get this idea and this message of what we do about positivity mm. and mental health to mm. as wide an audience as possible mm. yeah absolutely i think that's the thing it's like we all i think we're only now really starting to see this the results of the pandemic a lot of people i know are, are suffering quite a bit and i think this is why this problem i'd say a problem this situation is getting worse a lot of people in isolations happening a lot more now people aren't socializing as much due to the cost of living crisis we have in the uk people aren't going out as much and people are isolating themselves more and i think that's starting to really affect people's mental health and you know i could get on my soapbox about this but i'm so passionate about it and, and the conversation around mental health because it's not just a fad for me it's not a it's just oh you know talk about mental health in a kind of cool it's trendy sort of way it's actually stuff people are suffering right now and i know from personal experience and having used calm and and other things like that that's a real serious problem that people are suffering right now and yeah well just double p's one. just put in the chat that he's suffering at the moment with depression and anxiety um and obviously it's him approaching me in the first place yeah. about his depression and being open and honest that got us doing shows and then obviously ending up here. Mm. And like you say, the conversation is so important um, mm. because I think people think they're okay, but they may not be. No. And also we've got fronts as well. Like, you know, as men, let's be honest, I, I don't want to just make it about men. So forgive me, females of the chat, but you know, as men, we all like, yeah, yeah, we're fine because what are really going to people going to do at the end of the day, Christos, we have this attitude. Well, you know, you could complain about things or talk about things. Well, you just got to live with it. That's what our mindset is. And some, fortunately that internalizes into some sort of negative thoughts and Paul, you know, I'm always here for you, mate. And uh, I will holler you after the show because I think it's important that we do reach out. And when people are open and honest enough to say when they're struggling that, you know, they have the support network around them. Yeah. And um, yeah, Double P and I speak a fair bit. And mm. yeah, it's it's difficult. I think it's really weird as well because we're all streaming a lot more than we used to. Have you found mm. that? Are you streaming now more than you used to? No, well, I've got more of a structured schedule, um, but I'm finding my Twitch going into other channels less than what I used to be. But I think I think the thing is, I don't want to necessarily overshare here, but you know, yeah, my mental health has been really bad. I suffer from SAD, seasonal affective disorder, which is a a, a problem we have in the in Europe as well, Northern Europe, because of the lack of light that we have during winter time, and it's important to get out as much as you can and try and get. Um, as much sunshine and vitamin d because around winter time i suffer really badly and it's really difficult for me so that has impacted my streaming that's impacted my socializing it's impacted a lot of different aspects of my life um but i think it's a responsibility that we do have to ourselves to make sure that we do what we can day to day to make ourselves feel better. And that might be drink enough water. It might be get out for 20 minutes. It might be surround ourselves with positive media. It might be whatever it is for you that you can do to try and make yourself 5%, 10% better per day. Even though that can be really hard sometimes, because when you're depressed, you don't necessarily want to go out. You don't want to talk to people. You don't want to do these things. So it's a hard balance to strike. And I think ultimately um, you have to be honest with yourself and honest with the people around you. And it's okay. You know, it's okay not to be okay. You don't have to be captain. Me, I think it's great all the time. Sometimes things are a bit shit. And it's just being honest about it, isn't it? Mm. You know, because life is tough for everyone in completely different ways. Mm. Um, you know, it's not easy and we've got to keep it going day to day primarily because we've got partners or we've got children isn't it that's the mm. that's the main thing that keeps you going um and it's good that we've created i hope a safe space where people can come in hang mm. out for five minutes ten minutes whatever lurking mm. um but for a bit of time we're spreading positivity and you and i talk a lot on the mic yeah and that's part of what we do isn't it getting a message mm. across I think also as well that you don't really know what it's like just then to come into a chat and you say, hey, uh, 45 day, hey, DJ Double P, hey, shoestring. And then everyone says hi. And those sorts of little things, those little Duncans 
to yeah. chat can make a difference to someone's day when you're feeling isolated or on your own you know you've always got a channel there that you can go in you'll kind of know someone in there and that can make a massive difference to someone's day yeah because it's a lot of people don't have that check-in do they no you come into a channel people are like oh how are you doing you know good to see you you know hi mm. whatever and the interesting thing is there's a lot of these people are people you're never possibly ever going to meet mm. in the world in real life because mm. they are such across the world in different mm. parts of the world aren't they and it's amazing that we've got these friends that are sort of avatars or like twitch <laughs> names um <laughs> yeah. but it's good when we can take that conversation off twitch as well isn't it like on instagram mm. or something and you, you do that a bit as well mm. Absolutely. And I think the thing is, a lot of people will understand from my personally that, you know, I actually back up what I say when it comes to being there for people and trying to back up. Sorry, Crystal, can you turn me down a little bit? Because I can hear myself. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm a speaker. It's just, you know, when you guys, when you got that, you know, you're on a phone call and you can hear yourself back. It's like, is that better? Okay. That's better. Yeah. Um, where just where you back up what you say when you, you kind of talk to people. And I know that I'm there for people. And I think that's important. And, you know i work really hard with it and it does make a difference to my life and there's a lot of things that i cannot be proud of but i'm really proud of this movement and i'm really proud of the people that get involved with with, with the big weekender because i really do feel like it's a different sort of raid train from what's out there in my circle anyway because it, well, what tends to happen if you haven't checked out a big weekend and not only is it a great mix of music there tends to be this sort of normalization around the conversations about mental health. So what you do, it just it just elevates that conversation just a little bit more than what you would normally get on a normal raid train or anything like that. Because the premise itself is just about mental health, checking in with people, seeing how you're doing. And it's just, you get to the end of the Sunday and you're like, wow, it's so positive. Everyone was, it's just a really nice positive event. And I love being part of it. And I'm so great. I'm so, so grateful to every one of every one of you getting involved. I really am. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, the last one was amazing, <laughs> pretty emotional mm. in parts. You know, I still remember like the minimal P and double P. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, yes, yeah, it's, it's a great thing. And that's why I love getting involved because it is positive mm. and it is okay. We're going to play great music, uplifting mm. music, but we're also going to talk about cool things in terms mm. of looking out for one another, you know, being mm. there for one another, you know, this is really important stuff. Mm. Um, and it, it does elevate it from just a, a DJ mix mm. or just like a, a standard braid train or whatever. So, and also you're raising money for a charity, which really does make a difference in people's lives. So yeah. for the cost, for the cost of a Starbucks or a pint of beer or a vape, you can really pay for an operator that deals with a call from someone who is struggling. And that's the crux of it. And I don't want to make people feel guilt, but it's really the money, amount of money that we spend on nonsense every day. It really does make a difference in people's life. Just from personal experience, I know that um, I'm speaking to them and how, what, what the impact it really has on people's lives. And I think I keep going back to the same point about the pandemic and the effect it's had on now. You're getting more and more people that have suicidal thoughts. You get more and more people that are struggling with life and have no one else to talk to. Maybe they say they've got people that they can talk to. But it's also really difficult to talk to your friends because they've got their own stuff going on. So having an independent counsellor or someone else online that doesn't know your life, you ain't going to make a judgment, you ain't going to give you advice in, in that sort of way based upon what they know about you, that makes a huge doubt. One phone call can really save someone's life. And it's all very well. Let's look at the obvious here. It's all very well saying to be there for people, but it's hard to have those conversations with people. Because they know you, and then you don't want to give across this image that you're falling apart. But part of you might be falling apart. We've all got to kind of keep it together because we've got responsibilities. We've got jobs. We've got kids, for Christ's sake. So let's be real here, yeah? It's just, it's important for us to be honest about it instead of this whole veil of everything's great sometimes because obviously it ain't. And that's okay. So if any of you are suffering and you're from the UK, there is some help out there. And maybe Christos can put it in the in the chat um the the link for the charity yeah yeah we'll get it sorted out here we go yeah big up dj um is it ixo homsey chico chico homsey yeah, chico big yeah. Up chico. i mean there's, there's lots you can do there's there's mind uh there's change there's mental health samaritan's calm zone november there's lots big of up, charities uh, but up. calm is the one that we're raising yeah. money for 
Uh, right, let's have a little look at what's going to be happening. Uh, guys, I mean, I get on rants. I'm an ADHD sufferer, so I get into like massive, uh, hyper focused rants. So if you get into rant about, I'm not doing a Bob Geldof here, right, guys? If anyone knows who Bob Geldof is, I'm just very passionate about it. So just excuse me, all right? <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, it, it's important to be passionate because otherwise, why would we be doing it? Yeah. And I mean, that's a great artwork for a star. And, yeah, I didn't. You know, I didn't ask for the like. Fair play to Liam. Liam, um, you Liam DJ UK did the artwork for this. I didn't ask for my face on there, but he's put it on there. So this is some sort of. <laughs> I feel embarrassed. It's like, why is, is my face? On... <laughs> it's my face. It's my face when I was a little more handsome and had a bit more hair. I think. But he's made it small, so you can't really see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's great. Big shout out, Liam. Uh, Liam, yeah, he's, he's he's really really taking the whole concept to mind now. I love that the tree and the mind and the brain and stuff like that. Big up, Liam. Yeah, right. Let us see then. So this is Friday. So talk us through Friday and some of the DJs taking part. Well, the thing is, obviously, I'm combining part of the global funk family. So we've got a bigger global funk family um, uh, repping on this thing. But obviously, International Day being uh, International Women's Day. So I've tried to include as many women on this day as possible. However, a lot of them are already booked on very trains and things like that, because naturally, it's International Women's Day. So we've got, um, yeah, a great mix of music there. I think what you'll find from 1030 till about 4 30 you've got a very much actually most of them are very very eclectic um styles of music and then in the evening 9 th 7 30 to about 12 that's when the dance music starts kicking in a little bit but the rest of them are like multi-genre djs and and have you given them any sort of guidance and said play this sort no. of thing like you say just mm. then the sort of no. dance floor sort of djs or have you just booked it in that way yeah, I've booked it in that way. So therefore, I know the styles of music that they play. Um, so for example, I know Vilify, Katie, A Diligent Fingers and DJ Speed are much more of that Friday night, let's party, let's go, let's have it uh, type of thing. And then you've got um, the other guys, which are much more, you know, eclectic. It, it's multi-genre. Um, I mean, they're all multi-genre to a certain degree, but there's certain people at certain times that play a certain energy of music if that makes sense yeah okay and here's another thing you run with hour and a half sets rather than yeah. an hour is that a deliberate yeah. thing yes because i think an, an hour is too short and two hours is too long uh look i yeah. mean don't get me wrong i I, I, do, I do six hour sets and seven hour sets but i think sometimes when you're doing raid trains two hours can just be that little bit too long where you keep the audience you keep the audience um, entertained, but you don't bore them. But also you get enough of that artist because an hour, I think you're just starting to get into your flow after 20, 30 minutes. And then you're yeah. like, oh, I've only got 20, 30 minutes left. Um, so I think our house perfect for a ratio. What do you guys in the chat think? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I do 45 minute ones, <laughs> which are quick ones. That's, uh, that's quick. We do yeah. hour ones. Um, I play on ray trains, which are an hour and a half. So I do slow mo Monday. Phonographic materials, jazz. Mm. Uh, jazz Wednesdays is a two-hour set, actually. Um, yeah, that's funny because jazz. Jazz, yeah, jazz, exactly, jazz. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Most songs are like eight minutes, ten minutes long, minimum. Well, if you play them slow mo, I did a slow mo jazz set <laughs> last time as well. Um, but we'll, we'll come back to slow mo in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Double P saying it takes him twenty minutes to warm up. So I, I think that's the same with most DJs. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting. I was on um, Bum Rush 45's uh, Ray Train. Um, what was it on uh, the first Friday? Um, mm. And I think one of the, a couple of the DJs were going live like about 45 minutes before yeah. their slot time. Mm. Um, and I think it's a weird one because in the old days you'd go, well, I still do actually. I, I sort of watch as much as I can of the DJ before me before I go live. Mm. But I think they go live a bit earlier to try and collect their audience before yeah. the raid sort of hits. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What do you what do you think? Uh, no, I, I think it's good. I think 15 minutes before is great because you get people coming in, but you're not taken away from from the, the other DJ. Um, it depends which circles you're in, of course, but also I think it just gives the DJ a chance to warm up. There's nothing worse than putting yourself on a couple of minutes before you have a technical issue or something doesn't come yeah. out properly. And then you start. The, what I tend to find if I have any technical issues within the first five, 10 minutes of my set, 
it puts me off so I can get out of the way if the sound ain't coming right, the mic ain't loud enough or there's a crackle on the line or anything like that, but also to generate some people coming in. So when the raid comes in, you've got you've got some people there. But I think it's more to do with the fact that there's a DJ, it warms you up and you feel, come on, let's have it now. Let's have it. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> right, let's have a look at the uh, Saturday. So, it's, yeah, talk us through the DJs on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday is much, I, I would say, like, you've got a nice sort of, I would say that you've got the continuous of drum and bass, Dave A, Funk Heavy G, then multi-genre. Again, start Disco Campbell at 9 o'clock is going to wake everybody up. And Disco Campbell brings the energy every single time. He drinks about a litre of Iron Brew before he sets, but he plays the most amazing music. <laughs> and he's just got the best energy. And it's almost like, you know, remember Mr. Motivator in the UK? It was like yeah. on the breakfast channel. He's like that. And he brings the flavors. And then we start to get a little bit more electronica. So there's a lot more drum and bass house things going on on Saturday. Um, and it's much more of a party vibe, I would say, on the Saturday afternoon stroke evening. Um, very grateful to have so many great names there. And uh, yeah, some of them you might know, some of you don't. But trust me, every single one is high caliber. And I am so grateful to have them on board. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of amazing DJs, mm. but again, mm. the other thing mm. I love about being on raid trains and especially multi day raid trains, there's, there's lots of DJs that I've sort of heard of and interacted with, but I haven't necessarily caught a set. And then there's other DJs I've haven't come across yet, which is why yeah. I love it because it's every day on Twitch you stream or a part of something, you generally mm. make a, like a new follower or a new friend or someone. And that's the amazing part of it, isn't it? You're constantly mm. connecting with new people, new new mm. friends. Yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of these, this is why I'm excited. It's like, I love introducing new music to people. It's one of my most favorite things to do. But then also introducing new DJs to people. Yep. Because I started to see now, a lot of the people that have got traction has come from Big Weekend event where people have gone, oh, you know, I remember seeing catching them on the big weekend and then you see him in the chat then and that's what i love and you go into the chat and you go oh yeah you know i remember you from the big weekend and that introducing people to great djs people with great positivity as well it's not just about their music it's about the way they present themselves as well and it's like this a human aspect of things so you've got the music and it gets people going and great things like that but a lot of those people are there really positive on the mic they're really positive people. And that's what I want to try and get at. I, I, I try to want to move away from the whole ego and the ambitious individual DJ. Let's just play our set. It's all about me. Ain't having that. Ain't having that at all. And I like DJs that make people feel welcome. Chats that make people feel welcome. Because that's what it's about. It's all okay. You could get you could get DJs with great numbers and all that business. But if they're chatting and engage with people, or they're mods and engage with people, or the DJ to engage with people, what's the point? There's no yeah. point. It's just they just it kills the vibe. So I that's another reason why I bring certain people in because the way that they interact with their audience, the way their mods interact with the audience, and the way their chat interacts, I think that's an important part of this weekend as well. But that's an important part. Yeah, it's definitely an important part of the big weekend because it's getting people together and saying, look, this is how we want to present mm. what this is about. But mods are so important aren't they yeah yeah um and your sort of general viewers people who pop into your chat every now and again because they're they're your people aren't they they they're your sort of people who look out for you um and it's great to be able to sort of give back to them isn't it and sort of show them how much they are appreciated as mods and as viewers and as people who help you along your way on the channel yeah big up the mods big up big up the mods each and every time you got regular ones that come out. It's nice when you go into a chat, and even if you don't know them, they give you a shout out or they welcome you in. It's important to do that. I've got great mods, big up Foxy, big up Paradise Breaks. Um, they're kind of you know those type of things where you go in and you just go hi to the DJ, but then the mods go, Hey, welcome in ADP or whatever, whoever you are. That's really, really important because this is why. I my my whole attitude towards this is not about the individual. There's plenty of times that we can have this, the, these events about you and promote yourself, but it's a collective. That's what this event's all about. And I want people that are going to make people feel welcome, Christos. You know. 
Yeah, yeah. Because we, we come back to the fact that we're organising an online festival. Mm. And it's the same as if you were organising a real life festival, isn't it? And you've got, say, m- lots of people involved. You mm. tell your team who are sort of running the thing, you know, this is what this is about. This is what we're trying to spread. You've got to look out for everyone. And, and mm. that comes across, doesn't it? Because positivity spreads mm. and it can change someone's mood you know, mm. just popping into a channel, can't it? You know, and that's that's what we sort of try and promote, mm. get people to come in. You might not even like the music, but come in because it's a welcoming space mm. and there's a good group of people, the chat, who are there to hang out with you. Yeah, you're not always, that's the thing, you're not always going to be able to please people, guaranteed. There, there's a lot of people I know that might come into certain DJs, they might not need it, but they stick around because they like the channel, they like the vibe of the channel. Yeah, That's I mean, the I... thing. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not always gonna like every style of music. And the thing is, again, with these multi-genre ray trains, you are gonna get periods of time where I say, okay, for maybe two to six, for some people that might not be their style of music, but they tend to stick in because of the way that the vibe is, and that's another indication of a good ray train and how inclusive it is. Because even if you don't like the music, are you sticking around? Are you part of the chat? Yeah. You know? And it's interesting when people come across. Uh our raid trains or whatever you know for example people suddenly find coffee and donuts um mm. and they're like oh this is really cool you know you guys play 45s and they find a little pocket but then they get welcomed in by everyone else chatting and mm. it's just you know it really makes my day um and someone who also makes me smile is <laughs> double p is going to do a muppet special i thought i thought you do a muppet special every stream though don't you <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played Manamana for a while, actually. Um, and I've got. Didn't a you play? You, v- version you of that play yeah, you played. Um, you played a Muppet song recently, didn't you? Oh, I, I often chuck the yeah. Muppets in somewhere. Do you know that's one of, the, one of the first records I ever, I ever, I actually used to. I had this old radiogram type thing, and I used to just as a three-year-old used to scratch the Muppet record, and it was so full of scratches because I was listening to it. But I was just loving hearing the sounds, and like you know, when you got the record, you like me moving it back and forth. So as a young kid, I was obsessed with just you know when, like, I remember as a young kid when you used to rewind your VCRs and see what people walk backwards. That used to put me in hysterics. I used to laugh my ass off. <laughs> it's just like people walking backwards like benny hill but like backwards yeah. to the international audience you probably don't know who benny no, hill is don't know who benny hill is yeah yeah uh, <laughs> i don't think we'll, we need to explain <laughs> no i think that's a bit um, old school yeah. let's have a look at, i think we got to saturday so let's have a look at sunday um i mean yeah sunday Sunday vibe beach. We got DJ Double P. Some tweaks, of course, yourself, Madame Electrophy, yes. DJ Andy Smith. Andy Smith of yeah. Port- yeah, Mr. Porter's Head from uh yeah, Porter's Head. Uh Sucker Side Music, my safe and of course I'm finishing. John the Hat as well always does curate an amazing set. He does personally have a theme for every um every set he does for the big weekend and it's usually around men's mental health, suicide, things like that, but it's always very powerful. Yeah. And it's a great start. And Fergs has promised me that he's going to be okay because he's, he's he used to present this show called um, the Hangover TV. It was like a TV show or something like that. And uh, Hangover TV. Yeah, it was um, some On old show as a, a TV show. As a TV show or something like along the lines. It used to be something I used to do or radio show or something like that. So, um, and he's going out for the football on the Saturday. So that should be quite an interesting stream at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, you've got DJ Double P, which will be f- um, with Minimal P as well, which is always yes, a highlight. Yes, Minimal P. Yeah. I might see, I don't know, I need to check if she's around. It may be that Zizi can join in for a couple of records for our set. Yeah, I mean, I love it. It's always great vibes. And the Sunday show as well, it's like, I, I, I again, I pick the music and the DJs that fit within a Sunday vibe. I mean, they're all multi genre. But it's just, I, 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 I'm so grateful for every every DJ getting involved in this weekend because it's going to be fat. It's going to be really good. I think it's also Sundays are great on Twitch. That's why I think the Sundays. I know I'm involved in the Sunday, mm. but um, that's why I think the Sunday's always been great. But it seems to be every Sunday there's something cool going on. Like we've been doing mm. Global Funk Fan with the 45 Kids. We've done other collaborations with like the 45 mm. Bandits and 
and like a you you do your Sunday service show as well, and Scott yeah. does his you know Sunday Grace. We've done one drop to the reggae show, um, and it's it's great. And Mr. Pate Mix streams as well. It's just a great yeah. Place I'm to be on sorry about that, Mr. Mr. Pate Mix. I am very sorry because I I've got ADHD and I tend to get excited. So I end up, especially for international people, so I end up sounding like, so I will speak slower. I will make a conscious effort. Oh, bless him. I had, I had Mr. Pate Mix. He came on the show and he was like, my, my English is not very good. I was like, it's fine. It's so much better than my French. And we had a conversation. It was, it was good. You know, we talked about coffee and donuts. We talked about reggae we talked about him djing and yeah it was it's great to have conversations with people from different countries yeah. that you wouldn't normally get to have that opportunity and that's the friends that we've got now are international friends that's what i love well, that's, that's, that's why that's why you're such a g christos because you combine everything and that's why you're a rare diamond on this twitch sphere i'll tell you that let's all give christos i know we'll get embarrassed about this now but let's give Christos a bit of credit here. He's an absolute, the hardest working man on Twitch. And he's an absolute G. And I love your shows. I love your raid trains. Coffee and Donuts is amazing. A lot of your raid events, the one that you did on the weekend, which was um, which was really interesting. Day. One, yeah, 33 day. I don't do drugs anymore, but I thought I was reliving some flashbacks. <laughs> when I the came into his Monday. Yeah, it was like slow. I am I tripping here? It's an addiction. <laughs> it's a proper addiction, um, and it's even getting people who I never expected to do it. Mixed Hoffman yeah. played a thirty-three slow mo set. He hadn't done one before. He's like, "I'm going to give it a go." It's, I think it's a bit strange. And then by the end of it, he was like, "Yeah, I love it." <laughs> yeah, it's so bizarre. You, if you come into it and you don't understand the premise of it, you would be checking yourself, going, "Am I okay?" Looking in the mirror. Yeah. Like, yes, that. But it went. It was funny because I went from that to um, going to a streamer with a who was wearing a tutu. I won't name the streamer, and I was like, "Am I sure I've not taken drugs? Like, what is going on?" <laughs> it was like, that's what I love about this Twitch world. You literally jump from stream to stream. Sorry. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> Mr. Pate Mix says he can use channel points for a slow mo interview. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it, yeah. I I just love basically putting stuff on mm. and not knowing what people are going to do, and it just pushes people's boundaries. And it's the same with what you're doing. You're putting this on, and you basically said, "Look, the only premise is it's got to be good vibes. We've got to talk about mm. mental health and good music." And it's just you're leaving it in their hands, giving them a small little brief. Yeah. And it's amazing what people come up with, isn't it? I couldn't, I'd feel, I'd feel like an asshole if I was telling people to play. Oh, God. I mean, I couldn't imagine myself ever sending an email to someone saying, listen, if I'm booking you for the DJ, then I'm booking you for what you do. I can't imagine ever going to someone like, oh, can you just play a half an hour of this and 45 minutes of this? God. I, I yeah, I could never do that. <laughs> I, I literally, if I'm booking you because I really appreciate you and, and I value what you do and you bring whatever you want to bring to the table at the end of the day. Yeah, okay. Um, and probably the last area we can talk about, um, calm. Mm. Obviously, you, you sort of said before that you've used it, but why specifically does that remain the chosen charity for the Big Weekender? Well, I mean, as you've been pointed out there's lots of charities that deal with mental health um so there's nothing in particular about calm which differentiates it from a lot of other mental health charities but i think being a man and struggling to talk about my mental health or emotions or having friends and people around me who are also men um that's probably and because i use the service that's really it. I, I can't really explain it any further than that. Um, yeah, and, I, and that's probably because I've used the service. It helped me in a very dark time. I don't want it to be specifically about men, but I want to try and normalize the conversation around men's mental health. Um, and that's really the reason why, because it helped me. It saved my life. So that's the reason why I stick for it, because without them, I might not be here. So it's as simple as that, Christos. Okay. So 
we're going to hopefully introduce people who may not know about Calm through mm. the Weekender. Um, how did you first become aware of Calm? And how did you find them? Google. <laughs> Simple Google helplines. Um, and just even having the, bro you know, the feeling at the time of like, what do I turn to? And I was just looking for organizations for free counseling at the time. And then it just, you, you know, clicking on one thing stumbles on the next thing. And then before you know it, you find it and, and then you phone them. And before you know it, that was, that was the whole difference is I was, I was particularly inebriated at a and I just needed someone to talk to. And, um, I put online helplines for people in that particular mindset. I hate using that word, suicidal mindsets, and um, came up with their number and then give them a call. So yeah, that's the reason why it's it's difficult, and I don't want to overshare about my personal life. But at the same time, yeah. it's it's very important to me to be. This is how this is why you ask the question. Because yeah, and I think you know, it's important. So you know, someone maybe listening back to this doesn't mm. have to come and watch what we're doing doesn't have to go straight to that but might follow the same path you did um yeah. and like anything you ask google don't you that's that's, that's how we work yeah. at the moment um, yeah and it's good that it can lead you to something that has like you say changed your life now hmm. obviously they are a charity so we're trying to get funds and raise money for that so you know for example a small donation what would that get and you know a, a bigger donation what would that help with the charity yeah well the thing is it's an organization that's completely run on funding and donations and the operators that they have you know the cost of i said earlier cost of a coffee um a starbucks or a mcdonald's big mac whatever the nonsense we spend money on sometimes pays for one phone call and i'm trying to look at the stats here maybe Christos, if you can go into Google, look at the stats of that, how many calls they get per day from people. And obviously they're paying for operators that are trained counselors and people that are, uh, are um, trained in that field to obviously help people. And that costs money. And not only from an organization, you know, it's a non-profit organization as well. So you haven't got any big director taking all the funds, which you get with some charities. It's all a bit of a front sometimes with some things, but when you actually look into it, where the money gets funneled to, the actual all the money that gets donated gets into their frontline services um and they're trying to actually at the moment uh, open because at the moment they're only open from 5 to 12 5 p.m to 12 and that's seven hours per day and obviously as an organization they want to be open to people that might be struggling at three o'clock in the afternoon but they haven't got the resources to do that at the moment so um it's um two 200 calls daily yeah, two, daily so that's 200 yeah. people people are on the brink of doing something very stupid in their life that might be a father it might be a might be a brother it might be a son of someone and you know i'm going to be starting off i don't want to start off my my set on the weekends uh, in a negative thing but i'm going to start my set a little bit earlier than nine o'clock and i'm going to play some videos from the calm website which actually highlights a lot of these um not only what they do but our personal stories of people that have used what calm you need to do as well is send those videos to all the djs uh, yeah and just say if they can you know if they've got the tech knowledge and, and ability to uh try mm. and use one during their set it's a you know one or two three minute yeah. thing in an hour and a half you know i think it's good so we've been talking on barty cut show he's got a calling show and we were talking about adverts and how yeah. they can be quite annoying if people leave them on and obviously I've got mine right down to the minimum. Basically you watch a pre-roll before you get here, but there's no adverts during yeah. the actual stream. And I've done that yeah. deliberately because I have the talk shows, but as we're streaming, we can use an advert from calm of effectively what they do yeah. as part of the donations. And that can be a good moment to say, look, this is what we're doing this for. Do you know what? I feel like I've been a bit, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I feel like I felt like I didn't want to put impose on the DJs. That's a great don't, idea. Don't impose it. Don't impose it. Just say no. Like, not impose it. But what I meant by that, it's like, if yeah, you want to use it, use yeah. It. That's basically, I think, the best way of wording it. I think yeah. I was a bit sort of insecure about putting it on people to do that because I felt like no, you, that's you, my you own. Can't, yeah. You can't make people do things, and I don't. Yeah. And for me, yeah. I send people out the flyers and stuff, and I say, there you go. I don't say you have to use an overlay or you have to yeah. do this. Most people do because it's there. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. But I don't impose it on anyone. Um, but it's the same with this. You just say, look, there's an asset. This is why we're doing yeah. it. If you want to play it, play that's it. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I'll send that out. That's a great idea because then it's up to them then if they yeah. want to put it on there. You just, you just and, make it as easy as yeah. possible. Here's the video. Yeah. You know, here we go. Okay. Double P, that. you can. You had that video going with the cartoon on the rocket, didn't you? So you managed to get a video on there. We can do it. Okay, cool. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, I think that's most of the things we wanted to talk about. Yeah. If there's anything else. No, no. I think thank you again for having me on your show. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell your viewers and people that might be listening to some catch up about the weekend. Uh, thank you to all the DJs getting involved. Hopefully during my excited rambles that I've got my message across because it is very important to me. I think we're going to be making a difference in people's lives, but also we're going to have a lot of effing and fun this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. So um, tune in whenever you can and uh, it'd be great to see you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, mate. No worries. Hang on there for a minute. Let me just set the raid. I think we're going to go and join Forever Seeps, who is on nice. the phonographic materials raid train, which is one that Big up the chat. Big Rig does. But yeah, thank you everyone for being here. We've got two of the beat was here. Double P, Jethro. Uh, we had Chico Comzi. We had Mr. Pate Mix. Um, nice yeah. one. Thank Appreciate you. it, guys. Thank you, everyone. It's been a lot of fun. And tune in to the big weekender. One last look. There you go. There is the Friday. Starts off with me. 8th of March. Starts off with ADP. Great DJs in there. Yeah. Then we've got the Saturday, which is the 9th of March. ADP's in there as well. Uh, then we have uh, the Sunday, which is me and ADP yeah. as well. And lots of other great DJs. <laughs> but it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, take it easy, everyone. Nice one.